morning. Please sit. Can you hear me at the back? Our sound system is down, I'm afraid, apart from these radio mics. So please bear with us until we get the people in to fix it. Now then, anybody who wasn't here on Wednesday who wishes to be ashed, can you put your hand up and we'll set aside the ash for you? One, two, we'll come to you. Three. Thank you. I shall say the necessary. Dear friends in Christ, I invite you to receive these ashes as a sign of the spirit of penitence with which we shall keep this season of Lent. God our Father, you create us from the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be for us a sign of our penitence and a symbol of our mortality. For it is by your grace alone that we receive eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Would you please come up and receive the little um, thing that we do, Canon Tony and Judith? Yes. <coughs> Remember that thou art the dust, and to dust I shall return. Turn away from sin, and turn to Christ. Amen. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. We welcome you all to this service. Uh, the Holy Eucharist, call it what you will, Holy Mass, Holy Communion, Supper of the Lord, whatever your Christian tradition, you are welcome in this church. We remember that we are now in the season of Lent, a time for prayer and fasting. It is a season of spiritual renewal and preparation, in which we think about Christ's temptation his suffering and his death. So let us prepare our hearts and our minds to receive our Lord in the most holy sacrament of, altar, of the altar by saying the collect for purity. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you, in the name of the Church, 
to the observance of a holy Lent, by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word, and to mark a right beginning of remembrance, and as a mark of our mortal nature, let us now kneel before God, our Maker and Redeemer. I remind you that as we gather at Christ's most holy altar, we must recall the promises and warnings given to us in the Scriptures, and so examine ourselves and repent of our sins. We should give thanks to God for his redemption of the world through his Son, Jesus Christ. And as we remember Christ's death for us and receive the pledge of his love, resolve to serve him in holiness and righteousness all the days of our life. On the first Sunday of Lent, it is traditional to say the whole of the Ten Commandments. When I were a lad, a long time ago, we had to know the Ten Commandments, the Lord's Prayer, and the Apostles' Creed. I doubt if it happens very much these days. But here the commandments which God has given to his people and examine your hearts. I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods but me. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You shall not make for yourself any idol. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have mercy. mercy. You shall not dishonour the name of the Lord your God. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have mercy. mercy. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You shall honour your father and your mother. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit murder. Amen. Amen. Lord, 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 have mercy. You shall not commit adultery. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have mercy. You shall not steal. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbour. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbour. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have mercy. mercy us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There are no other commandments greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. My brothers and sisters in Christ, as we prepare to celebrate the presence of our Lord in word and sacrament and in this penitential season of Lent, let us call to mind and confess our sins. God our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us. Save us. Save us. Behave, behaving just as we wish, without any thought for you, our fellow human beings, or our planet. Save Father, us. forgive us. Save, Save us and help us. For failing you by what we do, and think, and say. Father, Father forgive, us. forgive us. Save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world around us. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. May Almighty God, the Father, the Son, 
and the Holy Spirit forgive you all your sins and bring you to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. We will say the Kyrie in English. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. The Collect Reading Epistle and Gospel for the first Sunday of Lent. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ fasted forty days in the wilderness and was tempted as we are, yet without sin, give us grace to discipline ourselves in obedience to your Spirit. And as you know our weakness, so may we know your power to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> the first reading comes from Genesis chapter 9, verses 8 to 17. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you. As many as came out of as many that came out shall be shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth, and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Here ends the first reading. The epistle is taken from the letter of Peter, chapter 3, verses 18 to the end. For Christ also suffered for sins once and for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God walked patient, waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight people, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. Here ends the epistle. May the Lord be in your heart and on your lips, that you may proclaim his gospel worthily and well. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord is a great God. O oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. 
The Lord be with you. And with and thy spirit. spirit. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory, Glory to thee, O Lord. Lord. In those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart, the Spirit descending like a dove on him, and a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent, and believe in the good news. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to you, Christ. Christ. May I speak and may you hear in the name of the triune God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Whenever I hear that Old Testament lesson read, I'm afraid an image comes up in my mind. Halfway between the cathedral and St Peter's, there's a cart, two layers, and on the bottom layer is Noah. It's one of those sort of advertising things for the passion play, the um, mystery place. So you've got Noah and family, and above them on the roof is a well-known character from the cathedral. <laughs> We're on video, so I won't mention his name. Um, and he is there not in his usual role as Caesar, but he's still got a toga on, great white sheet, on the top, huge cardboard rainbow. And he's saying, and I promise we'll never have a deluge and rain like that ever again. At this point, I'm looking down towards St Peter's, and the rain is coming down like a monsoon and it's coming off the roofs so fast the two fountains cross over. It is absolutely deluging. Noah and family have jumped off the cart and gone into a shop doorway and poor old God is stuck in the wires that are holding the rainbow. And I think was God serious when he said he did never rain again like that. He hangs his bow. Now the word in Hebrew is, that's used for a rainbow is actually the word that's used as a warrior's war bow. So God is hanging his bow up in the sky as a sign of peace. And he promises never to wipe mankind out again with a deluge. He doesn't promise that there won't be other disasters. We move to our second lesson. And St Peter is harping back to Noah. Why? Well, Noah was a new start. When Adam and Eve were created, they were actually created vegetarians. And it's at the Noah point that they are told you can inherit the earth, you will be able to pro procreate, people the world. That promise has not gone with the flood. And secondly, you have authority over all, not just the vegetation, but all the animals. So they're now omnivorous. It's a new start for the world. And it starts with a lot of water. 
And Peter is saying, we're having a new start. And the start is using water. And the water is not a bit of magic which washes the dirt off your hands or your forehead. It goes deeper than that. It's a spiritual experience. It's a new start. It's a wiping away of the previous sins. Jesus starts his ministry. And it's been argued by theologians, why on earth does Jesus want to be baptised? He doesn't need it. He's doing it vicariously on behalf of the rest of us. But nevertheless, he starts his ministry by being baptised. And immediately he goes out and we have a period of 40 days of contemplation, of testing in the wilderness with the wild animals. Is creation reset to the time before Noah when animals were friendly and Adam was there and named them all? Or is it in the fallen world where the animals, particularly the ones out in the desert, which is an horrible place, and it's full of devils and all the rest of it. But they are there to test Jesus. The church said, well, how are we going to have an introductory system for new Christians? We better start by baptising them. So it's appropriate on this first Sunday in Lent that we mention baptism. And then we'll have a series of lessons to teach them what the Christian faith is all about and when we get to Easter, that great feast, then we will confirm them and they become full Christians. And some of the existing Christians began to think, well, these newcomers are getting a good teaching course. What about us? We could do with a refresher course. And that's the origin of Lent. It's a refresher course for us. So all I'm here to do today is to introduce this course which lasts for 40 days, leads up to Easter, so that we greet our risen Lord on Easter Sunday fully reinvigorated by having revisited our basics of faith. So we use this time wisely. We've only got 42 days left to Easter six weeks. We are now seriously having to put ourselves to the test. Not just a superficial I give a chocolate for Lent, but an inward washing of our souls and a contemplation of what it's all about to prepare ourselves so we are robed in white to greet our resurrected law, not very far off. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be now and always acceptable unto thee, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Thank you, Keith, for those inspiring words. And I can assure you that the Judean desert is a pretty horrible place. But now, we will affirm our faith in the words of the Shorter Creed. Let us declare our faith in God. I, I believe, believe in God, God the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. I believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. I believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. I believe in God the Son, Father, Son, Holy Spirit.
O thou healest yet, though the sun be set on those Galilean hills, we can ne'er forget how the crowd was met on those Galilean hills. So with grief and pain, Lord, we come again, and thy touch our being thrills, for thou healest yet, though the sun be set on those Galilean hills. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you this morning for the joy of worship. We thank you, Father, that we are gathered here together in the name of Jesus, the one who loved us and gave himself for us. We thank you, Father, that we have been made clean through uh, the washing of the word and through, Lord, the ministry of your Holy Spirit. Look into our hearts this morning and meet the needs of each one of us, remembering how St. Peter tells us to cast all our burdens upon the Lord because he cares for us. We thank you, Lord, that you are such a wonderful Saviour. And as we bring to you all that is upon our hearts, we especially pray today for the persecuted church. We think of our brothers and sisters around the globe, and we think of our brothers and sisters in China, Lord, and all that they are suffering there, Lord. We pray that you would sustain them and uphold them. And we pray for all those who are suffering because of their faith. We think of the terrible things that have happened to the Muslims in China, Lord. And we pray for them, that you would strengthen them as they have been put into prison and such awful things done unto them. Father, we do pray again for all of our persecuted brothers and sisters. Give them grace and give them strength. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Lord. <coughs> Father, you sent your Son to bring good news to the poor, sight to the blind, freedom to the oppressed, and salvation to all. You have said, I have come that you might have life, and that you might have it to the full. Anoint us with your spirit, and rouse us to work in your name. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we pray that the Holy Spirit will continue to guide the Church and its bishops, priests, deacons, religious and lay leaders who have selfishly answered the call that you have given to them. Lord, you have said, I will build my Church and the gates of hell will not prevail against my Church. We pray for all who worship in our churches, irrespective of whatever their denominations are. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that the leaders of the nations of the world will treat those entrusted to their care with justice and respect. And we particularly pray for our sovereign lady, the Queen, and all who hold authority under her, that we may be godly and quietly and truthfully governed. We remember, Father, that your word says that righteousness exalts the nations, but sin is a reproach to any people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the people of Texas as they combat terrible snowstorms and for, for the floods that are taking place in that country. Lord, give wisdom to those who have the care and of those who are authority in that state. 
Lord, in your mercy. In your Lord, Amen. Amen. Lord, we continue to pray for all those who have been affected by COVID-19. We especially thank you, Lord, for the light at the end of the, the tunnel. And we pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will lead members of our parish family to participate in the evangelism and uh, revitalization of this parish for 221. We pray, Lord, that you would send your Holy Spirit mightily upon us and that you would unite us in love, in faith, and in your truth. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, Lord, for all those who have been affected by this plague. We pray for all those who have been working to bring relief, Lord, to all those who are suffering. We think of all the national health workers, the teachers, the postal workers, shop assistants, and all others who work on our behalf. We also remember the, the distress of those at school, especially G. CSA students who are concerned about their exam futures. Lord, in your mercy. Lord. Lord, we pray for all those who are sick and we ask that your blessing may rest upon them. We remember Mike Schubert, Jackie Owen and her husband, Linda and Marilyn Dutton, Stuart Chisholm, Mo Hollett, Mika Barnett, Beryl Livesedge, Dr. Jeffrey Hale, Margaret Perrell, Rachel Barrow, Ottila and Stephen, Tegan Shepherd. We thank you, Father, for Canon Tony, rejoicing that he and Judith are here amongst us this morning. We thank you for the way Tony has enriched the life and ministry of this church down through the years and the blessing that he has been to all of us. We ask for your continued blessing to rest upon him and his ministry. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayers. We pray for the pose of the souls of all who have died in the faith of Christ crucified and for those whose faith is known alone to you. We pray, Lord, for those who die alone and for those who die in misery and distressed. Father, we thank you that they are all known to you, that underneath them and round about them are your everlasting arms of love. Lord, we pray that you would hold each one of us close to your heart, and send us out of your sanctuary rejoicing in this wonderful, full and rich salvation. We offer these prayers in the name of our Lord Jesus and join them with all your saints here on earth and those who are around your throne in heaven. As we say, Lord, accept these our prayers for the sake of your church and for the glory of your holy name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. strange part of our service these days to peace. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom should I be afraid? Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. 
the peace of the Lord be with you all. Lord, Lord, also with you. Let us offer one another, I suppose, a wave of peace. Peace be with you. have been reading bands today, but sadly yet another wedding postponed. I hope we'll get back to normal in the not too distant future. Father George will celebrate on Wednesday and Ember Day according to the Methodist rite. Our first Lent thought was posted on YouTube last night, an introduction. And our thought for Friday the 26th is COVID-19, a plague in our time, and will be posted on YouTube and later on the parish website. And in fact, the opening of our Lent thoughts is a photograph I took oh, a few years ago now of that Judean desert. I've had discussions with Nan and we have agreed that when things are back to normal we will hold a memorial service for David here in St John's. I would be grateful if I could have a brief meeting with the PCC secretary after this service and also with Tim. And now for the office. come from you, and of your own do we give you. I pray that this sacrifice of mine and yours will be acceptable to God, our Creator and Redeemer. May the Lord accept our sacrifice for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his church. We say the short Agnes day. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, Bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. As we move to the most solemn part of the service of consecration, we remind ourselves of the need to come to God in the simplicity of the prayer that our Lord taught his disciples to say and we join with them in saying the traditional version of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give thanks and praise. Lord of all life, you created the universe where all living things reflect your glory. You give us this great and beautiful earth to discover and to cherish. You give us your love 
even when things go wrong. Jesus, you hurt and pain. Through him, you wipe away our tears and fill us with your peace. We thank you, loving Father, because when we turn to pray, you sent Jesus, your Son, to give his life for us on the cross and show us the way to live. Send your Holy Spirit that these gifts of bread and wine may be for us, Christ's body and his blood. On the night before he died, when darkness was ended, Jesus took bread. He gave you thanks. He broke it. And shared it with his disciples, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember me. After they had eaten, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and shared it with his disciples, saying, This is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. <clears throat> so Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate his love, his death, and his risen life. As you feed us with these gifts, send your Holy Spirit and as by the power of the Spirit, this bread and this wine become for us the body and blood of your dear Son, and change us more and more to be like Jesus our Saviour. Help us, Father, to love one another as we look forward to that day when suffering is ended and all creation is gathered in your loving arms. And now with Blessed Mary, your Mother, St. John the Baptist, your herald and baptizer, and all your saints, we give you glory through Jesus Christ in the strength of the Spirit today and forever. And now we give you thanks because you have given us the spirit of discipline that we may triumph over evil and go in grace as we prepare to celebrate the Paschal mystery with mind and heart renewed. Now, with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voices to join the eternal song of heaven, saying the first sanctus. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes in glory. <clears throat> By the mystery of the mingling of this water and wine, May we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share our humanity. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
Hi, how are you? Not bad. Good, good.